He's such a good player to hope. Bastel moving through. Round eye could be number two. It is. That's it for Albion. To Wembley. 22 minutes. And Tony Brown is the scorer. And Astle is away. Pursued by your. Good ball to Brown. Brown. It's in. Cunningham's going to get past Carrick. And he does. Looking cross. Brown. Yes, that'll do it. Tony Brown, his second goal of the night. Good work. Catello Brown. Oh, yes. up and gets up well here's Tony Brown and it's there Tony Brown the man who's given all his footballing life to Albion scores what could be his most important goal for them this uh, 1961 I'd uh, just left school I was 15 because you could leave school at 15 in those days um, and I'd I'd already agreed to join Manchester City, um, but then the Albion, the Albion had a, a, man, a scout, a northern scout in Manchester, and he came knocking on the uh, parents' door the one evening, asked if he could just have a chat, um, told him that I'd already agreed to join uh, Manchester City, but he said, well, you know, we'd be prepared to just come down the following weekend and just have a look round West Bromwich and uh, got nothing to lose um, you know and, and uh, bring you, you know you, you, your father can come with you so say so agreed said yeah okay then he came down and uh, they were actually having uh, trials for some uh, schoolboys for, for, and they were playing the Albion apprentices and it was a ground of the Revo at Dudley and I went along and they said, would, you know, would you play in it? I said, yeah, no problem. And uh, I was lucky enough to score a hat-trick. And then straight after the game, um, they whisked me back to the, the Hawthorns here and said, you know, uh, you know we, we want you to join uh, West Bromwich Albion. And looking round the place that day, I just, I don't know it was, I just fell in love with the with the with the club I thought it's very hard to explain Dave but I just thought you know this is where I want to play football something just I can't I can't mm. explain why it was just something that that happened on the day the right lines of West Bromwich enough to turn anybody's head down. <laughs> that's right and so me, me father said to me you know it's up to you Tony do what you want um, and so I said there and then okay then yeah I'm I'd like to join West Bromwich Albion, and that was it. Um, the following Wednesday, I think it was, the manager and the assistant manager came down to Manchester, uh, to the hotel in Manchester, and uh, I met them and, and signed apprenticeship forms. Must have been a fun conversation at Manchester City. Well, it wasn't a nice because I had to go back and tell the manager at Manchester City he was a it was George Poyser at the time that I um, had decided to join West Bromwich Albion instead of them and uh, I always remember after I told him he said look son he said a lot of young lads like yourself he said they, they, uh, they go away from home they get homesick and they want to uh, you know come home again oh, and I thought oh he said but, it, in, but uh, it, it, for the case with us don't come knocking on our door. And I thought, oh, blimey, you know, as a 15 year old. And, uh, but that was it. I, I'd made a decision and, um, and I, as I say, I signed for West Bromwich Albion as, a, as an apprentice the following week. If it had been Manchester United rather than Manchester City, what would have happened then? Well, I'm not too sure, Dave, to be honest, because I was, I was a Man United supporter in those days. A real kid who used to go and see all the home games whenever possible. And, uh, they were my team, you know, the Busby Bays at that time. And, uh, but they never came knocking, so, you know, there was other f one or two other northern clubs mm. had been interested, but uh, Manchester City was the one that did, had asked me uh, to sign. And, and then, as I say, the Albion came along and uh, I changed my mind. Mm. And 
probably I think it's probably the the best thing I've uh, you know decision I've made in in my life, except for marrying my wife, of course. Good save. Um, I mean, you, you came down here and obviously you were in digs and, and so on, fell in with a bad crowd like uh, like Bobby Hope, people like that. Uh, yeah, I was put in digs next door to Bobby Hope and Campbell Crawford, just over the road here, you know, about a quarter of a mile away. And uh, But Bobby and Campbell looked after me in those early days, you know, and I turned up, I'd still got my short trousers from school, because, you know, I'm going back to the 60s and when you left school you're still in shorts. and. And they used to take the mickey and the first thing I did was buy a long pair of trousers so that they, uh, you know, they couldn't have a go at me. But yeah, it's, they, they looked after me and, uh, and that was how I started my career, you know, as an apprentice doing, you know, this, this, this ground here, doing every, every job possible, clean the dressing rooms, toilets, help the groundsmen, paint the stands. We had to do everything as, a, as a, an apprentice there. And, I think that was a good upbringing for, for me at the time. Got a lot, a lot of discipline from from doing that as well. Mm. It took you a little while to um, to break into the team, and I think Archie McCauley was the manager then. Yeah, the, uh, Archie McCauley was the manager when uh, I was coming up to signing professional age, and uh, I kept knocking on his door, you know, asking him was he going to sign me, was he going to sign me, and I'd go the following week, and then he'd keep saying you know, come back son, near to the time you, your contract's up. And, and uh, I, was, I didn't know, really know what they were going to do, although I scored quite a lot of goals, you know, in, in the youth team and, and, and the third team. Um, but in the meantime, he, he got the sack and he got replaced by Jimmy Hagan. And uh, after a couple of weeks, Jimmy Hagan, one of the first things he did, he, he said, I'm going to sign you for profession professional. And, and that was it. And he gave me my debut as well, early debut. And uh, you know, never looked back after that. Everything went uh, went fine after that. Debut came, of course, in uh, in '63 at yeah. uh, Portman Road. Couldn't be much further away, really, could it? No, it was. I remember it just just over the way. We'd just finished training on the Friday morning here, on the pitch, and uh, I was just going in up the tunnel over there. And Dave Matthews came over. He was the kit man. Well, he was the assistant kit man at that time, and he said. Uh, he said, uh, Tony, you're playing tomorrow in the first team. And I thought he was just taking me. I said, get lost, Dave, you know. And I, and I went farther up the tunnel and then, um, you know, the assistant manager, Wilf Dixon, came over and said, look, go home to your digs, get changed, get your things overnight bag because you're playing tomorrow and you and your debut. And, and that was how it started. And it was a long journey to Norwich and uh, to uh, Ipswich. Stayed overnight in the hotel, never slept a wink. Just thinking of you know so much so nervous, and then uh, played the following day, and I was fortunate enough, you know, to score on my debut, and, and also we won the match. Clive Clark got, got the other goal. We won two one, and it was a it was a great send off to my to my professional career at the here at the Albion. I don't know about fortunate enough, fair compared. I mean, you scored two hundred and seventy nine. That couldn't have all been fortunate. Uh, no, not all of them, one or two, but <laughs> no, it, but, but it's a good start, isn't yeah. it, you know, to score on your day, because I'd, as I say, I'd been scoring in the reserves at that time, and, and, the, and then to take that step up to the first team, you know, playing with, with all the, the professionals, all the other big names, you know, it was, uh, it, it was a great, it was a great uh, day for me, and uh, it just, it, it was a great start to my career. And your dad managed to get down to, to watch the game as well, which is, I mean, in those days, it was a fair trek from Manchester down to... Well, it was, yeah. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd rung them uh, uh, to tell them on the Friday that I was playing, never expecting uh, them to go all that way to... Because uh, never had a car, obviously, you know. Never had a television, never had a phone. <laughs> Used to have to phone the next-door neighbour <laughs> if I wanted to get any messages to them. And uh, told him, he, 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 you know, he, he knew I was... Good playing the following day and, and all of a sudden before the game was in the dressing room and they had a very high window at uh, Portman Road and all of a sudden this, this fella appeared, this face appeared at this window, all the rest of the lads were saying get lost you know this and I, I looked up and I said hold on a minute it's me dad that is. <laughs> he'd come all the way he'd come all the way from Manchester with my uncle and uh, and so he saw me make me debut as well and score so he, that, was an, that was an added bonus really. Of course, having scored, you were obviously in the team the following week. No, 
no, I was I was left out again uh, the following week because um, they'd had a couple of injuries, and that's how I got to play on my debut. But the the, the other the people were fit again mm. the following week, so I uh, so I was out. And then I think it was about three weeks later, uh, I, I got uh, called up again. I it was against the Villa. It was my first local derby, yeah. and uh, we won again. And luckily, I scored again. Uh, Unfortunately, the next game I was out again. That was, that's that's the way it was in in those days with youngsters. Day, they were you know they would bring you in and out, in and out, and and eventually you know you get longer runs, and uh, that was how you you got yourself into the side. And as I say, all in all, it, it, it was a very good start. You know, I played a few games that season, not many, and then the following season I played more, and then you know then eventually became a regular.